You know, I see a lot of confusion on how to handle errors in Golang. And so I'm going to clarify everything while being as pragmatic and practical as possible. So you can focus on what really matters, which is building stuff. And so in this video, I'm going to teach you everything that you need to know to get started with errors in Golang. This is going to be the video about errors in Golang. You won't need to watch any other video after this one. So before I show you a real world example, let's make sure that we are on the same page. So let's consider this example here. And here we have a function that might or might not return an error. And so if we check the error here and if we click, basically this is a built-in type from Go. So we can create our own errors if we implement this interface because this is how interfaces work in Golang. And if you're not sure how they work, I have a video on that as well. But the important takeaway is whenever you have an operation that might or might not fail, you should always return an error. And so here, for example, if the ID is less than zero, we are going to return an error. And this is one of the ways you can create an error. This is another way, for example, using the FMT package. And if everything is right, you return a nil error. So here, the way that we handle it is that here on the main, what we do is that we get to the user, if there is a user, and an error if there is an error. Now, of course, someone needs to handle this error, and that depends on your application structure. For example, here I'm on the main, so I'm going to just handle the error here, but usually is the topmost color of the function flow that is going to handle the error. But for example, if you were building an HTTP API, the HTTP handler, the topmost layer, would need to handle the error. And we're going to see that in a bit. Uh, I'm going to show you an example on an API. So let's step back a bit and here I have created a new function called do work, which is just a simple function. It doesn't have any purpose, but we can imagine it would have more things. Now, the thing here is that I have multiple calls of do work, which receives the user that we got from the first computation. Now, when you look at this example, and if you come from other languages that use try catch, for example, you might think that error handling is go is a bit repetitive and you might think that as well. And if that bothers you, fine, because I'm going to show you a couple solutions in a bit. But first you need to change your mindset how you approach Go. Because the thing is, error handling in Go is extremely important. The language design and conventions encourage you to explicitly check for errors when they occur. So here, if there is an error, we can always check if there is an error. Of course, you could ignore it like this. Uh, then you would need not need this. But of course, if you're building applications in the real world you're not going to ignore errors and even from our functions you should be returning errors alongside the output of the function whenever there is a possibility for one and in my opinion i prefer to have this explicit flow here than having to wrap everything that i do in a try catch or maybe even forget to wrap it in a try catch like you can do in javascript for example and although this looks weird at first give it time because this is going to make your programs way more robust and this is why you'll see Go code written from 10 years ago and will look and work the exact same as today. How crazy is that? Because in JavaScript, the code I wrote last week, it's already deprecated, man. You know, if you look at who are the creators of Go, for example, this man here, these guys are one of the top OGs of programming of all time. They have been in the trenches way before I was born. But hey, there are solutions to this problem here. And I'm going to give you right now the first one, which is if you see that your function has many error handling, this is a sign that you should split your function further. Because, for example, in this piece of code here, what I can do is that I can transform this here into a function. Just like so. So we have just trimmed down the complexity of the main function, and here is the implementation. So here we can also, we need to also return nil because there is no error. But you see, sometimes this is a symptom of the complexity of the program that you are writing. So this is the first solution that you could go with. Now, I'm going to show you just now how you can apply this to your API and how you can naturally split your API projects. And we're not going to even think about that because we're going to divide everything into services and I'm going to show you how you can do that in your API projects. So let's say we are building an HTTP API and here in our handler, the cart checkout handler, we are parsing the payload. So here, whenever we parse the payload, we check if there is an error because it's coming as JSON. We need to validate if the payload is JSON. And here we validate the structure. So we check if there is an error. And even from our services, we are returning errors. By the way, this project is the e-commerce project that I have on my free course. I'm going to leave the link in the description below just in case you are interested. And here, because we have an HTTP layer, we are not returning anything. So this is going to be the topmost layer. We could return an error, but we are not returning anything. What we do is that we modify 
the response the response object here and we write to the user with the status codes or whatever and just a side note if you are building apis your errors should be consistently returned what this means is that for example here i have this util which i use every time that i want to write an error and what it does it's always going to return json and in this structure here so any front end or clients that is consuming our api can expect the same structure whenever the api fails and I see a lot of APIs that are not consistent. And one of the ways you can do this is by reutilizing functions like this. And basically all we need to do is pass the status code and an error message from the layer above. And we don't need to worry about anything else. Now, for example, here in our service, we are also checking for errors. So for example, here we have the package level error, so we can reuse it across multiple functions, for example, here we are checking if the cart is empty on the get cart items and here below we are also checking if the cart is empty so we can reuse errors like this in go and then here on the http level what we are doing is that we're checking if the error is different than nil and then we can also do is check if the error is of this type so this is an utility function that we can use from the errors package and basically here we could return a different error message or status code depending of the output that we want. Now, the most interesting part on how we built this API is that we have divided everything into separate layers. For example, we have the service layer, the transport layer, which in this case is the HTTP, and then we also have the storage layer or the repository. For example, whenever we create a new handler, we are passing in the dependencies. In this case, we are passing directly the services or the stores, so just like so. And here is the handler signature, so this is here a representation of how we are dividing our application or on how it's built. Now, why is this important to error handling? Because this is a natural way of dividing our application into meaningful functions. For example, on the HTTP handler, we are handling all of the errors because after this layer here, we are responding to the user with an error. So we should handle here. Then on the service layer, we also have errors, but we should return these errors to the topmost color. And the same happens here on the product store, because if there is an error fetching the user from the database or creating a user, the database is going to return an error. And then the service is going to catch it and the service is going to return this error to the HTTP handler. Because on the service, you have business logic and then here we have database communication. So all of the error handling will be combined here on the HTTP layer, which then we can decide which error code to send to the user. For example, we could send them a 200 or if there is something bad with the payload, we could send them 400 bad requests. And this is how we organize APIs usually uh, if you want to have a more robust structure. So the other solution is a way to alleviate some of that pain of handling errors in your transport layer. And as explained here on this post of the official Golang blog, basically the, the gist of it is that here you have your handler, for example, this is how we were doing it. And the idea here is that you make a new type which is going to be of the type handler function, but instead of not returning anything, we're going to return an error. So this means that your handlers, your HTTP handlers are going to return an error. For example, this is the transforms handler. Instead, we are returning here an error of, instead of returning anything. And basically what they suggest is that you then implement the serve HTTP method, where here you can check if there is an error, you just return 500, which by default is going to be the, the place to handle all of the errors that you just returned. So all you need to do is just return them and here they will be handled like so. And for example, here on this new example, here I have another API which has users and here I make uh, I have a utility function that is going to create an HTTP handler and this is the way that we do. So we're returning a new handler func which checks if there is an error and then writes JSON to the user with that internal server error. So if we check here, for example, the handle get user, we are just returning errors like so. So at the end of the day, you still also have this if check, so I cannot get around that. And I know some people like to return the errors from their handlers, but hey, it's up to personal preference. I personally don't, but someone has to handle the errors, right? And for me, it just ends up being on the HTTP layer, which for me is the topmost layer. So this is the one that handles them all. And honestly, I don't mind whatever you use, as long as it solves the problem that you have. And for me, adding this layer of complexity here doesn't make sense, because having a helper function that formats the error and writes in one line to the user is more than enough for most cases. 
And if you have middlewares in your API, this is even better because you can actually catch the errors on the middleware level. Whilst here, you might not be able to do it, but then again, uh, it depends on your application and what you're building. And to sum it all up, as long as the business is making profit, you are having fun, applications are being built, it really doesn't matter how you use and handle errors, as long as everyone on your team is consistent about doing so. So with that, let me know what you guys think about this and how you handle errors personally in your applications. And so thank you for watching and I see you on the next one.